So this is a pre-assembled lithium iron phosphate battery bank. We have eight cells in series, so we're gonna build a 24 volt battery. And the major steps of assembly have already been completed. The cells are fixated in place with these cell holders and strapped together with this green strap. And the bus bars are welded to the terminal, so all you have to do is add a BMS, which only takes minutes. And each cell in this pack is 100 amp hours, so eight of them in series is two and a half kilowatt hours. This is pretty much an EG4 server rack battery cut in half. And without the BMS, and I think the warranty. So it actually does have a five year warranty, but I'm not sure what that covers. There's not much details on this page. But if you screw this thing up or you use the wrong BMS, that's on you. They're probably not gonna replace it if you break it. So some beginners will be better off buying a server rack battery that has a full featured BMS because the BMS we're gonna add to this today when we build this battery is not gonna have all the cool functionality of a server rack EG4. But it is cheap, so two of these together would be a thousand dollars for five kilo watt hours and then add a $100 BMS and you will have a lot of capacity for a very low price. I mean, this is pretty darn cheap, but if you screw it up, it is on you. So I don't want people complaining about this. This is beginner friendly, but there are still some risk. Now, the only cheaper option than this is to buy the cells by themselves but you're not gonna have welded bus bars and you're not gonna have the cells strapped together like this with the cell holders. Also, you're gonna have to top balance them. When they're welded in this configuration, they are all at the same state of charge. So all you have to do is slap a BMS on it and you are completely done. So anyways, let's get started and build this battery. Now first we need an 8S BMS. If you're gonna use two of these batteries in series, you're gonna need a 16S BMS. An 8S like this is for 24 volts and a 16S is for 48 volts. And this BMS comes with a Bluetooth module and it's very easy to connect to your batteries. It will not have all of the features of a server rack BMS, but this has pretty much everything that you need. So on this side we have two blue wires and on this side we have two black wires. These are labeled B negative and these are labeled C negative. Now these blue wires connect to the battery at the main negative terminal. And then these black wires go out to your inverter or solar charge controller or battery charger. This will be considered the main negative after you connect this BMS. And then the BMS has the Bluetooth module down here and the balance lead. So this goes out to each individual cell so it can monitor the voltage of each one and manage the battery pack. And then you have two temperature sensors for high and low temperature protection. So all we have to do is connect this BMS to this battery pack and we will have a fully functional lithium iron phosphate battery. So first off, the BMS balance cable at the end of the wires, we're gonna have to add terminal connectors and they look like this. And these are easy to find at any local hardware or automotive store. You also need ring terminals on the main connections to the BMS. I added my own. Again, you can find these at hardware and automotive stores. Now, because this is a beginner video, I'm gonna teach you how to do these crimps properly because if you don't, you're gonna have a lot of problems. First, we're gonna replace these because these look awful. You have exposed conductor, it was not cut properly. So yeah, let's cut these off and redo them. Now we're gonna use a wire stripper to remove this insulation. Now it states that it's an eight gauge cable, so we're gonna get an eight gauge ring terminal. And you can buy kits like this on Amazon for very cheap. And here we have an eight gauge ring terminal that fits perfectly on this terminal, on the cell. So we're gonna use two of these. So simply slide this over the wire and then we're gonna use a crimp tool. Do not use pliers. This is made for crimping only, so you have a proper termination. So put it in the crimper and squeeze. And you need it to be tight. And then test to see if it's strong. If it pulls out, you need to redo it. And this is a gas tight mechanical connection. This is superior compared to a solder joint. And if you have some heat shrink, slide it over the ring terminal. And they should end up looking like this. Now we need to add ring terminals to these balance leads. And you need to ensure that you have the proper size. First, we need to know the size of the hole that we're connecting to. And on these bus bars, there are tapped holes. And this battery pack does not come with the screws to connect to these bus bars. So I went to the hardware store and measured it. And what you're gonna need is M5-0.8 size screws. And these screws are gonna look like this, but these are too long. And these were the smallest ones that I could find. If I were to screw this in, it would 
hit the cell and it could damage it. So to avoid this problem, I'm gonna use a nut or you could use some stacked washers. So I found this configuration works best. It gives me lots of threads to work with and it will not damage the cells. Now, after you know the size, you wanna get a ring terminal that can fit on here perfectly, just like this. And you wanna test your configuration on a bus bar before you add it to your balance leads. So if I tighten this all the way down, it does not damage the cell on the other side. Also realize you can only have this configuration so that the ring terminal is flush with the bus bar. You cannot have this nut on the other side. It needs to be touching the bus bar entirely. So to make everything work, we need to add these blue ring terminals to all of these balance leads, and then I need to make seven of these so that they can attach to the bus bars. So first you're gonna wanna snip these off because these are tinned with solder, and then strip each balance cable, now we need to crimp these to the balance leads, but you need to do it properly. Personally, I think these are too large. I have another crimper I prefer for small balance leads. So these are channel locks. For some reason, these work really well with small connectors, but I do not use these for large ones. These are very specialty. They're only 20 bucks, so it's worth it. Once you buy them, you'll have them forever. So just add the ring terminal to the wire and crimp it. And also crimp the insulation so it can hold on to the wire. And it should look like this. So repeat the process for all the other wires. Now we need to attach these to the individual cells, but I want the beginners to go on Overkill website and check out their wiring diagram. Be sure that you understand where every wire goes before you attach them. Basically, each balance lead goes out to a cell's positive terminal, except for the black one. The black one connects to the main negative terminal of the battery pack. And the main negative is the first cell. So this is first cell negative, and then the next wire is first cell positive. And then the next wire is second cell positive, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, and then eighth cell positive is the last one. And most people start with cell one, which is the first negative connection. Also realize that the black wire on this balance lead is also gonna connect where the blue wires from the BMS connect as well. So all three of these will go on the main negative terminal of this battery pack. And it's labeled on the side with a sticker, so let's add it right here. Oh no, these are a different size than the screws on the bus bar, so let me go find them in my shop. These are probably an M6. In my personal opinion, Signature Solar should have included this hardware because I think I'm gonna have to go to the hardware store. I don't have any more of those. Oh, yes! I found one and a second one. I got real lucky. Now, when we connect these to the battery terminal, these should be flush and flat with the terminal and this should be on top of them. So unfortunately, these are too long and I'm gonna have to add some washers, but do not go crazy with the washers because if you don't have enough threads, you'll strip these terminals out. So it's preferable to use a stud in these terminals instead. And this ring connector is too small for the new screw, so I need to get another one. Ah! Oh! All right, now we have everything, jeez. So it is finally connected, my goodness. So now the first connection is made, but we need to think about where we wanna mount this BMS. We could use double-sided tape on this metal, but ensure that the battery connections are not touching this metal. Or we could put it up here, but I'll leave that up to you. I'm pretty sure most of you guys will put this into a plastic box, and then you could mount this on the side somewhere. It's best to not have this touching the cells, but if you have it attached to metal, or you have some type of barrier, you can attach this to the side of the pack. Now now let's attach the rest of these balance leads to the cells. So the next wire is first cell positive and this is first cell positive, so let's attach it. And that's perfect, very nice. Now on the last connection or the red wire, you're gonna have to add your own conductor to this terminal to supply your chargers and loads. So you're gonna need a two or a four gauge cable that can go on this terminal and then you put the balance cable on top of that. And then tighten it down. Just like that. Now these balance cables can be quite cumbersome. They're very difficult to organize and make them look nice. Where you mount the BMS will determine how you wanna measure and cut these balance leads. Typically, because I use these BMSs on so many different batteries, I just connect them together with zip ties and I keep them as long as possible. But you can make them look really nice if you want. Now over here we have a main positive and over here we have the main negative. But to activate the BMS so that we can actually use this battery, we need to plug in this balance lead last. So let's plug it in. Oh, look at that, the light turned on. Now let's test the voltage. And we have 26 volts, so this battery is live. How cool is that? It actually works. So let's connect the charger and charge this thing up to 100%. 
and this is a 24 volt battery charger, so positive goes on positive, and then the negative goes on the negative. So now we're charging. We have 35 amps going into the battery. Now if I wanted to connect a solar charge controller or an inverter, we'd have the main positive right here and the main negative right here. The hardest part with this battery, in my opinion, is building a box for it where you can attach these positive and negative terminals. There are some terminals you can buy on Amazon that would work perfect for that application. And that's pretty much it, a very simple battery. Just slap a BMS on there and you're good to go. Also, if you don't use the right hardware on these cells, you can damage them. Um, if you strip this thing out, you're gonna have to use a helicoil and that's kind of scary to do, especially drilling into a battery cell where there's electrolyte that's very dangerous underneath that terminal. So in my opinion, beginners should stick with ready-built batteries. But if you want a cheap battery for a ridiculously low price, this might be for you. Now personally, in other advanced use users might use these cells to build big battery banks with high quality BMSs. Um, instead of having multiple BMSs and having a ton of batteries in parallel, building a large system from the ground up with these packs might be a really good idea. But keep in mind, if you have two of these packs in series, you need to charge them up with a 24 volt charger and BMS and then connect them in series, unless they will not be equalized. So if you're using these to build a massive pack, you're gonna have to balance all of them first. But not bad for the price, and if used properly, Properly, you can make a very cheap and very powerful system. So thank you so much for watching and please let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below and I will see you in the next one. Bye!